Hi Pam, so today's video is going to be on one of the most popular Lama Car Day and the most popular pack if you want to use the common name. Um, and this species is probably one of the most misunderstood and one of the most difficult to keep. And um, while well, I say the genera is um, within the Hypos Domino. So this is the Gold Nugget or Baron Citrus at Xanthelus to use its scientific name. And this species was described in 2011 in Neotropical Ichthyology. So I have, uh, what's it, four individuals here from three of the L numbers. I do not have an L85. Um, so I will get this specimen up. So this is my largest one and this is probably the best example when it comes to body shape. So Barium Cistrus actually means heavy hook so if I zoom in on the fish the hook likely well the ancestrous is the hook part and this likely refers to these odontos which are slightly hooked at the ends not anything like ancestrouses but there it is a little bit hooked and heavy I assume is the body shape more than anything because I wouldn't say there's larger odontodes than any others but these are real beefy fish and they get really beefy with age and then Xanthelus literally means gold so that is in reference to this sort of golden colour but not all are golden um, some can have, have more of a yellow background tinge to them Others uh, might be more white, and generally the yellow is on the spots, but it's not always. It can make them a little bit more difficult to identify from L142 sometimes, but generally there's a more of a yellow tinge. So these fish originate from the Rio Zingu in Brazil, and they grow anywhere from 18 centimeters down to length for L81, which is this one, and I'll talk about different varieties later and um, 24 centimetres standard length for L177 oh, L177 and also for L81 generally they are larger fish and this is standard length so this excludes the um, caudal or tail fin so this measurement goes from this point here on the tip of the head all the way to the end of the caudal peduncle which is this region here this region and so before the tail starts or tail or caudal fin so these fish are found in high flow high velocity water um, like many hypersomnia they actually dorso ventrally flattened which allows to reduce resistance in the high flow and I think these fish are really well they are quite strong fish so they're probably I'd say because they're grazing on more photosynthetic um, life forms this means that they probably have to resist a lot more flow so they need to be a lot stronger than ones that might be underneath the rocks and places like that which is why they're probably deeper they're not spending as many time in cracks and crevices either the suction pads like mouth are then mostly being for feeding if I zoom in other than for, being, for feeding this suction pads mouth will allow the fish to stay in place with the high flow and actually allow an, like a level of movement. All the fins are at the bottom of the fish, so the fish is probably, well you can assume the fish is spending a lot of time at the bottom and using, sort of moving along that bottom area. Yeah, so they are very deep body, they get more so of age if you compare so I have an L18, which is generally, I would say, a bigger fish. You can see this juvenile is a lot flatter than a larger individual who's not fully grown either. So they do spend probably most of their time, almost all of their time, grazing on the surface for algae, bacteria and all such. These fish rarely experience temperatures below 28 C. So they're not going to really cope in a tank that is below those temperatures. And that's the same for a lot of Rio Zingu fishes. Generally, I tend not to go above 30 C because oxygen saturation will decrease. And this will result in, well, generally, it will just make the fish 
uh, have a lot of more of a harder time to get oxygen into their gills and into their bloodstream. So high velocity, high flow environment is really beneficial for getting as much oxygen as possible into the water, even though high temperatures do reduce it to a degree. But they need those high temperatures really for digestion. They're adapted for high temperatures, which means that low, any low temperatures will mean that digestion is not so easy for them. The main thing with Baron Citrus and Thelis is they are very specialists in their diet. So their habitat is very clear, high flow water. But not all of the Amazon, and it's a big misconception that the Amazon is mostly black water. There's plenty of clear water areas, and this is an example. And this promotes the growth of photosynthetic microbes at that level where the light is reaching. So these fish feed on what's known as orphwitch, which contains bacteria, so biofilms, um, also um, algae, stuff like that. So it's not really like they're not feeding exclusively on algae there's also rhizoa sponges it's a whole mixture although i will classify them as herbivores it's sort of a very loose term i think in fishes it doesn't you can't really cate um, categorize them so much there will never be enough of that all for it to grow in an aquarium that will feed even a juvenile let alone an adult fish unless you had really a gigantic sized aquarium it probably wouldn't, and algae that do go in a creme like diatoms, which these guys are not really designed for. So they are extremely specialised, and if we look at the teeth of this fish, it really shows it. So I'm just going to zoom in and look at that, the mouth itself. I, herbivores tend to, I find, have this sort of round, very round mouth. Very large, sort of loads of these papillae. And it tends not to be as long on the fish, it tends to be just flat. So these fish are rasping on some sort of, but usually on the surface. And I doubt they would eat um, blackbeard algae. But if we look at the teeth on the fish, they are really fine, fine teeth. So these will really just gnaw away at algae and bacteria, just removing them from the surface. So I tend to feed mine Rapashi Solid Green, which is probably one of the few diets that replicates their wild duck, but Super Green would also. Algae are actually high in protein as well, but different proteins to animal proteins. So it is actually really good to feed algae to a lot of herbivorous fish. They have a lot more nutrients. Now let's zoom in a bit on the fish. Um, they have a lot more nutrients than, say, um, other things that you might like vegetables that might not be as easily digested so I would definitely focus on algae for this fish so if I just turn it around and they do tend to need a lot of feeding the thing is with this fish is they're probably feeding all the time they also have a very la long digestive tract and I'm not going to do a dissection of these fish because I don't want to ruin them but they have a very long intestines and that means that their food is probably taking longer to digest. It's a really sort of a sign of a herbivorous species if that digestive tract is long. They're having something that probably is high in cellulose or high in something that's really a lot more difficult to break down in their gut. These fish do grow to a hefty size really quickly to be honest in the first three to five years they'll probably do most of their growth so this fish is probably two three years old it's really difficult to say um aging freshwater fish externally is impossible but their sexual maturity for a lot of lower car day tends to be around the five year range so i would say that these guys are going to reach close to that sort of 15 to 20 centimeters within the first few years so they need they're a bit more like changing than people think they're not slow growing they're stunting malnutrition and well wrong diet will just cause stunting because if you think even in people um if the diet is wrong it will cause stunted growth and malformed growth and it likely will affect their reproductive system which is probably why they're not so easily bred so 
they probably do need feeding a lot more as well. I feed mine daily, I, and I might feed them a bit more than I really should, but they are eating constantly in the wild. So this fish is one of the most common to come out of the Rio Zingu and it would be a misconception to say that they're threatened or anything. They're actually really common, which is a bit of a shame because in captivity they do so poorly. They really don't cope well in captivity. They do need those higher temperatures, a lot of flow and the heating and then the diet, which makes them a lot, sort of a challenge to actually keep properly. So they're not a species that I'd ever sort of recommend to people unless they've got a lot of experience really in Laurel Cardi and want something that's a bit more of a challenge. So there are four L numbers that uh, represent barium scissors but I do not find they actually re reflect the morphology, the range of morphology of the species. So generally these four are all technically I would say juvenile variants the adults all tend to look the same. So adults will have, be a lot more like this fish. If I zoom in on this fish, you can see that he's a lot deeper. The spots are less obvious. Oh, I'm going to zoom in a bit more. So the spotting is a lot less, oh, now it's too much. Yeah, so spotting is a lot less obvious. It becomes pinfricks okay, at wild fish and that banding will go almost the tips and usually disappear on most of the fish I've seen. So I wouldn't really oh zoomed in not um so I wouldn't go buy the fish just for their juvenile coloration because it won't last long. So L eighty one is the smallest that as I said before it goes to eighteen centimeter standard length. So this is an L eighty one. Sorry I'll zoom in again. So this is an L81 and this is an, also an L81. They tend to be paler patterning but you can get bright orange ones. Their spotting is smaller and their banding is variable so they've got the smaller spotting. They tend to be the hardest but I wouldn't vouch on that for an easy fish to keep. The next variety is also known as the Queen Gold Nugget and alcohol does bleach the fish so hence why coloration is lost a lot. So this is L177, L177 is all, one of the larger ones I mentioned before. This has the largest banding usually and the largest spots. This one has residue, I think it's leftover slime coat probably on the skin. You can see that larger spotting as juveniles and these tend to brighter coloration, they are bigger and they are also one of the ones that tend to be a bit more challenging to keep. And finally, a very bad example of L18. L81 has the medium sized spots and generally reduced banding, even as a juvenile. And they are the most common, tend to be the cheapest if you want to buy them. They are also the largest. L85 does exist. L85 is an adult of the L81. So the, that is a much. Um, La that would be a larger fish. I would say an L81 would have to be bigger than this. I mean an L85, sorry. So it is a bit more, of, you'll never buy them really in stores because they're going to cost so much to import in. So they are pretty rare I'd say and I would love any Baron Sister Sandellas and I really want more large ones. I really enjoy keeping them and the challenge of it. So in the wild this fish is found in many other lower cardae um, and it's adapted to this plentiful resource a lot of lower cards feed on um, uh, sorry, detritus, they're either detritivores or algivores the majority they are carn carnivores, specialist carnivores and stuff like that and these guys really take that niche of feeding on all which which there's a lot of other Laurel Cardae in the Rio Zingu that do. They are found with bands such as Chrysolimus, which is really similar. They are also found around Hypencistrus zebra, um, Ancistrus uh, ranunculus, and quite a few other species. The one thing with all of these is they do not compete well with other fishes. 
They are slow feeders and they're also shy feeders. Even at night, a lot of fish will outcompete them because a lot of fish use taste and other senses to find food. Um, catfishes are covered in taste buds, so they can detect food even in the dark. So I'd always feed these guys at night, that's when they feel, feel most comfortable. But fish is such a cichlid, with the exception really of angelfish and discus, but a tank for those ones just have to be very specialised. Yeah, sickers will eat all the food before they get a chance. Anyway, so that's sort of about the species and uh, thank you for watching. Any questions I'm happy to answer. Anyway, uh, thank you. <laughs>